Grade 8 Math, number 11.1b. We're going to talk about constructing and measuring angles of transversals in this video. If you missed the first video, 11.1a, we talked about how a transversal is a line that intersects two lines in the same plane at two different points. So if we have parallel lines like this, the transversal is this dark pink line going through it. It doesn't matter what direction it's going, and the parallel lines can even be standing vertically, and we can have that transversal. See how it's heading downward like a negative slope, and this one's heading upwards like a positive slope? See that? When a transversal runs across parallel lines, it'll form eight angles. See? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's take a look up here. We've got angle pairs formed by a transversal, our dark pink line. We can see the eight angles that they made. We can see the interior angles. Those are the ones on the inside of the parallel lines. And the exterior angles, like 1 and 2 and 7 and 8, they're on the outside of the parallel lines. We have corresponding angles. Those are angles that are congruent that correspond to each other, like angle 1 and angle 5. We have same side interior angles, like 3 and 5. They're on the same side of the transversal. See? Alternate interior angles would be like 3 and 6. They're on different sides of the transversal. See that? But they're the same measure. They're congruent. And alternate exterior angles are on the outside of the parallel lines, like 1 and 8, and those are congruent. Okay? And we talked about that in the last video. So if you missed that, you probably want to go back because I talked about it more in detail. Now, we can see angles that are congruent angles that are in the interior or exterior. We can see that 2 is going to be the same as 7, 1 is going to be the same as 8. See that? Angles that are in the interior, exterior of the parallel lines. Can you see the angles on the interior and angles on the exterior? We can see angles that are adjacent next to each other. Adjacent means next to. So 1 and 2 are next to each other. 6 and 8 are next to each other. 5 and 7 are next to each other. 1 and 3 are next to each other. 3 and 4 are next to each other. See that? But they don't go across. They have to be side by side, okay? So no cutting across. Now, you need to write this down if you don't know this already. When you have complementary angles, they total 90 degrees. So that means you have some angles that when you put them together, they total 90 degrees. Supplementary angles, when you put them together and add up the measures of the degrees, they're going to total 180 degrees. And that would be a straight line. Now, if you can remember these two things, your life is going to be a lot easier doing geometry because a lot of things fall back on complementary and supplementary angles, okay? All right. So what we're going to do is construct, draw a line, and label two points on it, A and B, all right? So we've got our line, and we've drawn A and B on it. Now we're going to create a point C that's not on line A. So we put it right there, and then we draw a line through it that's parallel to AB. Okay, so now we have two parallel lines and three points. Now we create another point on the second line, see, where the C was, we put a D there. So now we've got a set of parallel lines with points A, B on the first line and C, D on the next line, okay? Now what we do is we create two points outside the parallel lines in the exterior. We can label them E and F, all right? Now what we do is we construct, draw, that transversal line EF running through our two lines. We can label the points of intersection where they hit the parallel lines G and H. See that? Now we have a set of parallel lines with a transversal. Now we can measure the angles made by the parallel lines and the transversal EF. Okay? So, when we look at angle CGE, so let's find angle CGE. Now remember, when an angle is labeled, that center letter is the vertex, okay? So if it says angle CGE, we know G is going to be the vertex, okay? So C, G, E. So that would be right here, that's this angle, and G is the vertex. So we measure that with our trusty protractor, okay? And after we measure it, we find out it's 84 degrees. Let's look at angle DGE. 
So DGE would be this angle. See? We measure it and we find out what it is and it's 96 degrees. Okay? So when we measured CGE, we got 84 degrees. See? And we measured DGE, we got 96 degrees. All right? So we line this up nice and pretty like this, and we can see the measurements, 84 and 96 for each one, okay? Now, what's cool about that is 96 plus 84 equals 180 degrees. Remember what we said? Supplementary angles total 180 degrees. It's a straight line. And isn't line CD a straight line? So this angle measure and this angle measure together makes 180 degrees, and that's called a straight angle. That's 180 degrees. See it right here? It's really a straight line, isn't it? So what's going to happen is whenever we find angles in here, they're either going to be 96 or 84 because of the way this is laid out. Those are the only two angle measures that are going to come out with this set of parallel lines and this transversal. So angle CGH is 96 and DGH is 84. Where's CGH? CGH. So CGH would be right here. See that? And DGH is going to be this one. So that means on this side of the CD line, we have 180 degrees. AHG and BHG, that's 84 and 96. That's going to be right here and right here. See? And then we're going to have AHF and BHF. See? That's 96 and 84. So those are the only two measurements on the entire thing. With eight angles, we've got two different measurements, don't we? We've got corresponding angles the CGE and AHG, where's, let me erase some of these, orange, CGE, that's this guy that I have marked orange, and AHG, that would be this one. Those are corresponding angles. See that? Can you imagine that it slid down like a translation? That this one just kind of slid into that one and they're the same, they're congruent? How about alternate interior angles? CGH, CGH, and BHG, BHG. See how this is an alternate interior angle to that one. See that? Now we have alternate exterior. Now that was interior, so it was on the inside of the parallel line. See that? So where would alternate exterior angles be? Alternate exterior angles are going to be outside the parallel lines. And that would be like this one, EGD and AHF. Those would be alternate exterior angles. See that? They're on opposite sides. They're on alternate sides of the transversal line. And they're on the outside, the exterior of the parallel lines. Then we have same side interior. You remember that, right? from the last video and from the beginning of this one, same side interior would be like this one and this one. Those are on the same side of the transversal and they're on the interior of the parallel lines. And if we wanted to find the other pair, it would be here and here, wouldn't it? That would be same side of the transversal and then the interior, okay? So these are angle measures for transversals and constructing a transversal. And we're gonna talk about justifying our angle measurements in a transversal in the next video. And I hope this has been helpful for you. I know this is a kind of a longer video than normal, and we're going to get through this. We're going to talk all about this throughout this chapter and transversals and angles. And don't forget, complementary angles are 90 degrees, supplementary are 180. Okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.